Hey everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd Likes to Film Stuff and before me I've got two phones. I'm actually going to be doing two separate unboxings. These came to the door at the exact same time. We have the iPhone SE, but the point of this video is for the LG G5. And man oh man, I've seen some reviews so far and people seem to be kind of hating on this phone. I, I want to hope that this will be a good phone, at least for me. Hopefully I can give this a favorable review. Let's go ahead and unbox it. I can get this sticker off. I did purchase both of these phones myself. I actually purchased this as well. This is the Galaxy S7. Serves as a good comparison point. This has been a very expensive month of phones, people. But trying to remain objective here, so buying these things really helps. Now, I have to point out first that my favorite phone of all time from LG has been the LG V10. So I think my expectations are kind of going to be against the V10. So I guess we'll, we'll see overall. So let's just get this off. You can see they're really boasting that modularity of the battery of the phone. I was at MWC at the press event and I honestly didn't like that feature all too much. I thought the phone was kind of awkward looking and it kind of created a weird gap and felt a little cheapish to me because of how the modular battery works. So LG has gone to the dark side of metal, and I have the gold model here. I feel like this might be the least ugly, or maybe it's the most ugly. I don't know. I thought that the silver one that T-Mobile also had available looked very toyish, so I went with this one instead. My choice would have been the dark titanium one. I think that's what it was called. So let's pull this off. So, first impression in hand. It's the same kind of feeling that I noticed while I was at Mobile World Congress. I, I don't like this here, this chamfered type of corner. It feels a little bit sharp in the hand to me. Let's go ahead and get these plastic bits off. Wow, that's not as easy as I thought it would be. Come on. I will reassess that feeling once these are off. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Well, at least we can say for sure that this is indeed a brand new retail model. La 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 la. Wow, they've really gone big with the strips here. Is there one here too? Yes, there is. All right. Uh huh. And there's this bubbly screen protector. <laughs> I'm not going to keep that on there. My word, LG. Look at this. It's cutting off my circulation. I can't get it off. Okay, now here it is. So yeah, it still feels a little bit sharpish. I don't really like that because of the chamfered part of the metal here. Now first concern that I see here, I don't know if I can represent it on camera, but I kind of see some indentations in the metal. Ooh, I don't like that. Up here, there's also what look kind of like seams and a dent and some seams. I will definitely be returning this one Ew! Why? Let's just chalk that up to a factory issue because I don't remember seeing it looking like that when I was at the event. Also when I was at the event, some of them had less of a gap here, some of them had more. And this is really not uniform at all. Damn, LG, this feels cheap. So this is nice and connected here, but then it's got a gap. So that's... what in the world? LG, you need a talking to here. Another thing I haven't really liked is where you've got plastic near the headphone jack. This part is metal, then this is plastic. It's for the antennas, so you can get reception, but it looks as if this metal part was actually a chrome that chipped off. So not so classy, not so classy. And there's this button here. This helps release the battery. I can get it off. So that comes out nicely. Now my concern when I was at Mobile World Congress at the press event was that this, I, most of the time you're going to be keeping your battery in here, I would assume about 99% of the time. But otherwise, what if you step on this? I would see this becoming kind of like a hazard point, a very weak point of this phone. I don't know. I really just don't know. You can see that there, really the indentations on this one. Really, I don't want to chalk this up to being a problem with the phone, but really a, a factory 
defect. I will exchange it and hopefully I won't have one that looks so poor. Let's set all this aside, see what else is in the box. Not going so smoothly so far. You've got a SIM, which I do not need, some packets, uh, serial numbers, and IMEI. We've got our charger. We've got a charging cable. So nothing fantastical in the box. I will be having the 360 camera coming to me. I will redeem that probably right after this video. I should also get a battery cradle as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and power on the phone. This is a phone that has the Snapdragon 820 SoC inside of it. The first concern I'm hearing people talk about is that there is some light bleeding along here. I'm gonna check this out for you guys just to see if that is a hugely widespread issue. Probably is. Let's turn it on. I was really hoping that this was just a fingerprint sensor and not a power button as well. I'll have to see how I feel about this combination. It is turning on. You can see that we've got this bit of a curve here. And the first thing that my husband pointed out is why? Why does it have a curve there? It makes it look like it's broken or it got bent or something. It's just part of the design. So, T-Mobile. We do have that really nice wide angle camera on this. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that, I'm sure. People are chalking that up to being gimmicky, but you know, we'll see. How's that? hollow kind of a feel to it. Android is starting. I can see just by holding this for a couple seconds why people aren't so impressed. It's awkward. It looks awkward. Who knows what type of dust is going to get stuck in there. Look, I can almost use that as a way to file my nails. This is the Bubba of LG phones right here. I loved the LG V10. It was kind of big, cumbersome, and heavy for most, but I thought this was very sturdily built. It, this feels Great in the hand, I like that rubberized back, also removable back. These steel rails on the side here really hold up and keep this device nice and strong. So if you drop it, you're most likely not going to break your display. You've got those two cameras on the front, love those. The camera quality was absolutely great on this thing. Just love, 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 love this phone. And the first thing I thought when holding this was, wow, they kind of stepped down from here. So you do have the ability to get a couple of friends. There is that camera module that goes on here. And also there's the Bang & Olufsen DAC. This comes with the DAC inside of it. So I kind of feel like I'm shortchanged a little bit. I don't want to buy extra things. So you can go next, insert SIM card. We'll just skip all that. Let's just set all this up. Looking at it, this looks like a standard LG panel. It's really bluish looking, bluish greenish cast to the whites. So I'm sure it's got a very cool white point. Not my favorite. I'm sure it's got a large gamut for colors. I'm sure it's similar to what we've seen before on this one and also on the G4. So skip anyway. What in the world is that color scheme? You know, I really want to like this phone. I do, I really want to like it. We can't say that this guy is going to compare side by side to what Samsung has created here. Admittedly, when I was at MWC, I wasn't so impressed hearing that Samsung basically release the same phone with a couple of modifications, but you know what? I'm just about to release this review, probably today, and it's phenomenal. This is a really great Android phone. It's probably my favorite Android phone in a while. I don't think I've been so happy with a Samsung product since the Galaxy Note 2, so it's really that nice. And this just really pales by comparison. But I'm going to give it the fairest review I possibly can. I want to like this. I do. So very clean interface here. A lot of people are angry because it doesn't look like there's an app drawer, but you can enable it. All right, so if you want to enable the app drawer, you can see that it's now right here, not down here. You essentially are just enabling the easy mode. So you go underneath home screen and you can see I've selected easy mode where this is the default home. Now it gets rid of it. So you have the option to enable the app drawer. I would probably still put the Google Launcher on here because I don't really care for this easy layout. Let's get rid of that background. That background is just terrible. There, I've changed it. Even though this display has a very poor white point, in my opinion, being very bluish, I do like that you have a nice contrast ratio with the displays that LG is using. You also have a wide gamut. 
They say that it matches the DCI P3 color space or comes very close to it. The problem is that consumer content that we have is sRGB, encoded in sRGB. So if you put that on a DCI P3 display, it's just going to oversaturate anything. So just expect really saturated colors with this and a very bluish type of a greenish white point. That's the same thing on the Samsung, but at least you can decide what color space you want. Real quickly, I wanna go into the bathroom and see if I have any of that light bleeding along the bottom. Either way, I'm going to be exchanging this unit because it looks really crappy to me. So now we are in my bathroom. Sorry if the audio sounds terrible, but look at this display. What? What is happening here? Now I've heard that there is light bleeding in abundance, but usually just around the bottom. I've got light bleed all over the place. That's a swell looking display. Thanks, LG. This is the cheapest, most expensive phone I think I've ever bought. And just look at the panel. It's not even uniform. It's got these weird splotches everywhere. Seriously, my second one better not look like this, LG. What color is that? The LEDs, you can see them perfectly here. You've got a lighter one, a bluer one, a lighter one, a bluer one. Uh, no comment. Yikes, even when looking at whites and grays, I've got this bluish bruising here that goes from the top of the display downward. I really want a new phone. I almost feel like I need an apology or something. All right, seriously, I would call this an unboxing fail. I'm feeling very, very sad and down right now. I will see about exchanging this, as there's got to be a, a better unit than this. And if not, shame on you, LG. Seriously, shame. Manufacturing what just feels and looks like crap. This phone does have potential, though. It's a really neat idea. You can remove the battery. It just It's not executed very nicely with this modular design. It's finally metal. You have that nice fingerprint sensor, although they did get rid of the volume it's on the back. The volume buttons, that's what I really loved about what LG has done for a while now. You've got some arguably great cameras. I will test those out. You've got some cool modular friends you can connect, though I would prefer to have the DAC built in. It's got a smaller size. It's not so huge. That's actually pretty nice. Actually, come to think of it, it's about the same size as the S7 Edge, a little bit smaller. But here is an iPhone 6S Plus. Here's a regular size iPhone. So it's really not so big. You've got that Snapdragon 820 SoC inside of it. Some nice specs, three gigabytes of RAM. So I will get back to you when I get another unit. I will go straight away to exchange this at T-Mobile. I don't know, maybe I'll get a different color. So this has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I will be back with you soon. I will let you know what happens with this. Time to unbox another phone. Maybe I'll be happier. Maybe this will be a better experience. Goodbye.